Hello everyone. My name is Moose Henderson. I'm a wildlife photographer and welcome to Photographer's Monday where I share tips and techniques to help you with your nature and wildlife photography needs. Join me today as we talk about ways to save money purchasing your wildlife photography kit. If you watch a variety of YouTube videos, you will come across the concept that equipment doesn't matter. You can produce the same results with a cheaper lens than you can produce with an expensive lens. I wish this was true. The difference between a cheaper lens and a more expensive lens may only be a small difference, but it is that small difference that takes a good photo to a great photo. So as many of you may know, I live in a tiny house. I drive a small car, a Ford Fiesta. I save money wherever I can so that I can live the type of lifestyle that I wish. So by living a meager lifestyle, how am I able to purchase the equipment that I need to produce high quality results in my wildlife photography and to be able to sell my images either as large prints, sell them to magazines and books, or sell them to, to various consumers. I do this by employing a number of money saving techniques and I will let's look into my camera bag. <laughs> One of the most expensive pieces of equipment that wildlife photographers will own is their long telephoto lenses. This is a Canon 600 millimeter f4 telephoto lens. There will be some photographers who will tell you that you can get the same results with something like a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens or maybe the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens and it is true you can get close to the same results but the honest truth is you can't in order to get those creamy smooth backgrounds that are so common for wildlife photography images of things like birds and animals and here I share one image of a marmot and you can see the background is just absolutely awesome. Here is another image I share of a great blue heron that has been published in Outdoor Photography magazine and sold multiple times and you can see the background is creamy smooth. Both of these images were shot with a 600 millimeter f4 lens. These lenses, new, cost approximately $12,000. That is the case for Canon, Nikon, Sony, almost all of the manufacturers of good quality camera equipment have a lens that is in this price range. And that is the price of a good, a good used car or even a cheaper car. My Ford Fiesta was about $12,000. These lenses are routinely upgraded, say every five 
to seven years, a camera manufacturer will come out with an upgraded lens. For instance, this Canon 600 millimeter lens has a version two and a version three. The difference between the version one, the version two, and the version three is a little bit of a weight savings and also a slight improvement in the quality of the glass. But this 600 millimeter lens during its heyday was used by all of the professional photographers who used Canon equipment. This is not a cheaper version like a Tamron or a Sigma lens. This is the lens that everybody used. It just happens to be a little heavier than the new pieces of equipment that you're able to purchase now. I purchased this lens for $5,000 used from Allen's camera in Pennsylvania. I suggest instead of purchasing uh, less expensive equipment that if you're unable to purchase the brand new stuff that you buy it used from a reputable camera store. Of course you have the option of buying it on eBay or something like that. I would not buy something of this magnitude off of eBay. I have purchased equipment off of eBay before and generally speaking I've gotten you know what I purchased but there's just too much of a risk when spending this much money on something that you're not able to actually try out for yourself or to purchase from somebody you can trust and this is the reason I purchased my equipment from Allen's camera I've been purchasing my professional photography equipment from them for about the last 20 years and I know that when they say a lens is in excellent condition that it truly is. There are other camera sales stores that also sell used equipment like Adorama, I believe B&H, uh, KEH, all of those are large camera stores that have so much to lose if they don't tell you the absolute truth about a piece of equipment. And so if I was to be purchasing a piece of used equipment, I would purchase it either through Allen's camera or one of these other types of, of professional photography stores. Another area where you can save money is accessories that go on to your uh, camera equipment that you need. For instance, this foot that you see on the bottom of my 600 millimeter lens is not the foot that came with the Canon lens. The Canon lens had a foot that was a little bit longer or a little taller, excuse me, and and also the foot did not have built into it an Arca Swiss bracket. This foot is made by Sun Photo and it has built into it an Arca Swiss bracket and it attaches on and is made custom for this lens. This particular foot cost about $40. There are are manufacturers here in the United States who also make feet such as Really Right Stuff, Kirk Enterprises, and Wimberley. Also Naturescapes makes a foot. But each of these other ones, the feet cost about $100 to $120. This foot, like I say, I think I paid probably $40 for. This is an area where you can save a little money and get the same quality of equipment. These Arca Swiss bracket type feet that are made in China are typically a third of the price or less than the equipment that is made here in the United States by Wimberley, Kirk, and Really Right Stuff. Uh, I have owned the expensive equipment and I have also owned the cheaper stuff and I find the cheaper stuff is nearly as good a quality 
and is just as functional. So this is one way that I'm able to save a little bit of money on some of my equipment. Another way that I'm able to save money is to manufacture some of my own equipment. And this is a ground pod that you mount your lens into this plate here and you're able to scoot along across the ground or you can also use this on a bean bag from your car window to give you really steady support. I made this ground pod for $10. A commercial ground pod like a Naturescape Skimmer 2 or the Ecla ground pod cost in the neighborhood of $100 to $125. This operates exactly the same way as those expensive ground pods. I actually made two of these for a little less than $20 because I bought a set of frying pans that cost $15.99, the T-Fowl frying pans, and I'll link a, a video I made on how to make these ground pods. You'll see that I have an Arca Swiss bracket in here and this is another one of those ones that are not made in the United States. If you purchase one of the brackets that are made here in the United States they will cost you anywhere from $75 to $140 just for the bracket and then you also have to purchase the plate that goes in here and that's another $65 or so. The plate that goes in here is attached on to my 100 to 400 millimeter lens and the plate and the clamp that I have in here I purchased and it's a company called UTBIT, U-T-E-B-I-T and the bracket was about $14. Usually I prefer to purchase American-made products, but when the same exact equipment costs you over $200 that I can buy for $15, I just have a hard time justifying purchasing the really expensive American equipment. Another area where I save money is my tripod and my tripod head. When you look at tripods, the ones for wildlife photography, like Really Right Stuff and Gitsu, those tripods cost about $1,000 just for the tripod itself. Then if you want a leveling head to go on top of the tripod, that's another $160 to $170. So in round terms, you're going to spend anywhere from $1,200 up for a carbon fiber tripod made by Gitsu or Really Right Stuff. This tripod is called an Innerel, and the model number is RTC. 90C, or excuse me, RT90C, and the tubes are just as beefy as the ones on a Gitzo or Really Right Stuff. It is just as sturdy and steady as the RRS and the Gitzo tripods, and I find it works just as well. I paid $297 for this tripod. I would not suggest that you buy a less sturdy tripod. In wildlife photography, in nature photography, landscape photography, you must have a sturdy tripod, one that will withstand vibration and also will withstand the conditions of weather that we shoot in, like blowing wind and things like that. Your tripod has got to be sturdy. This inner rail is just as sturdy as the really expensive tripods that I have owned in the past. Uh, it's my thought process that this tripod is going to increase in price in the next year or so 
that they've introduced it at a much lower price range in order to get some footing and to be able to get the name recognized. I've been using it now for four months and I've got no complaints. There are some features of the really expensive tripods that are better than this, like these feet, in order to release them, you have to turn it more than you do for like the Gitsu or the really right stuff. And also the really right stuff has what is called a ratcheting me 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 mechanism on the leg where you can pull it all the way out and then it clicks down into place as you go down. This tripod does not have that, but for the savings of $1,000, I'll do without a ratcheting leg. Another area where I save money is the head that goes on my tripod. And you can see that this is a Manfrotto MVH502 head. Typically the heads that we use in wildlife photography is the Wimberley gimbal head that is priced at $595. This Manfrotto head is just as sturdy and I paid $160 for it. Of course the disadvantage of Manfrotto is they have their own clamping system, their own way of attaching the lens to the top of the tripod head. But I adapted my Manfrotto head to be able to use Arca Swiss plates. And I'll link that up here as to how I did that. It was pretty cheap and easy to do. So those are a couple of tips to help you save some money. Uh, one thing I would not do is to buy something cheap that you just have to turn around and buy again. I would buy quality equipment that is going to last you and is going to produce the same results as the expensive equipment. I would not purchase equipment that got you close or in the ballpark or almost as good image quality because the difference between a radically good image and a so-so image is just a very tiny amount and sometimes that tiny amount has to do with the equipment that you own. Now I will agree that most photography is right here. It's in your head. It's your ability to see the picture, your ability to plan ahead, your ability to use your equipment. The equipment itself will not produce the image. It is, it is what you do yourself. But all of these folks that you see advising you that you can get the same results with cheaper equipment, at the same time that they're advising you about that, they're standing there with the really expensive equipment. And it's because, in all honesty, the equipment matters. What matters more is what you, can, what you have in your head and your ability to use the equipment, but the equipment does matter. If you found this a video to be of use, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again tomorrow or the next day. You all have a good day.